Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and today we're going to take a look at some new ecothermal camera range. Before we move on, I want to say a massive thank you for all the likes, shares, comments, all the love you've shown, all the feedback. It is really much appreciated. Keep on doing it. The community is a large community and we're doing really well, so thank you all. Globally, thank you all. Secondly, I want to say a massive thank you to Jake and his family, just giving birth to a lovely little baby boy. So when you get two minutes, make sure you message him and say congratulations. So, well done, Jake. So, what we're going to look at today, we have three thermal cameras. So Hikvision have launched a new eco range of thermal cameras. So a cost-effective range, um, which really helps introduce the thermal into the market where traditionally it was an expensive element of a system. Now we've got a cost-effective offering, which gives you shorter range VCA uh, capability, um, lower res thermal, and then on the case of some of the models, backed up with a, a, a color day-night image. So for instance, this new bi-spectrum uh, bullet camera, so IP67, brand new, low res, but two megapixel day and night with a low res thermal. So the VCA range, typically for a human, this is a three mil fixed lens. So we've got them in new uh, lens sizes, like three, six, uh, seven mil, etc. And um, depending on the model we're looking at. So most of the cameras here are three mil, so I've gone for the wide angle three mil. So much wider angle, lower res thermal, but then a detection range for humans of typically 20 to 25 meters. Um, so shorter range applications, but again, a cost effective solution. Um, this is a bi-spectrum one, as I said. So IP67, IP66 on some of the models. Uh, still got a BNC output on there for those of you who love traditional analog. Network setting for PoE, you've got your alarm input, output, 12 volt audio in and audio out. So still a really powerful device. We're gonna set this up in the, in the warehouse later and we're gonna see the performance of that. Moving on, so we've got the new uh, turret camera. So if you watched the unboxing video a couple of weeks ago, you would have seen we have a new turret. Again, lovely looking device. So it looks like a standard turret. Again, this is IP rated, so it could be used externally with a nice long fly lead. And it's got the traditional uh, PoE alarm input output or in and out in 12 volt. There's no BNC on this output, on this model, sorry. Um, and this is a thermal only, not, uh, no, this is a bi-spectrum one, sorry. I did buy the bi-spectrum version of this. This typically, again, although it's IP rated, probably suggested for indoor use. It's a nice uh, concealed fitment compared to a, a traditional bullet camera. This has also got smoking detection. So again, if you're using it in like, um, like plant rooms or sensitive rooms with a lot of data in there or server rooms, then we can use that for a, a, to aid fire detection. It's never replacing fire detection. It aids it. Um, so again, we'll power that up and have a quick look at the smoking detection. I haven't smoked for many years, but I do still have a lighter to check that. And again, we've got another um, dedicated thermal only. So they're both by spectrum. And this one is a dedicated thermal only. So again, it comes with all the uh, lovely doodars in the box. Even comes with a back box if you've got a bullet, so that's really handy. And inside there we have the bullet camera, again, BNC, audio in and out, alarms, PoE, um, new adjustable bracket, so it's like uh, the newer style 2.6 series, and uh, makes it easier to adjust. But again, this is only a dedicated thermal, so if you take this lovely concealed wrapper off, you'll see thermal only, not a bi-spectrum. But again, for some applications, you only need the thermal because you're using a PTZ, etc., for that application. Again, all three models of the three mil lens. We're gonna go and power one up, see the performance of it. Stay with us, and we'll see you in two ticks. Okay, so as you can see, I've relocated to our lovely warehouse. It's uh, raining outside. So I'm definitely not gonna go outside in this rain. So I've set up the uh, bi-spectrum thermal. So I'm just gonna show you what the view looks like with the two megapixel day-night camera and the thermal camera. As you can see, our lovely DVS fan over there. So you can see that's the three mil thermal and that's the uh, day-night camera, which is like a 2.8. So there's not quite the same view, but they do cover uh, near enough the same view. So carrying on through to the setup, into configuration, standard Hikvision web browser function. 
let's just go through. So the VCA resource type, we can have temperature measurement and behavior analysis or temperature measurement and fire detection. Two different modes. We're going to concentrate quickly on the VCA sign for the VCA intrusion line cross function. Uh, we can change it to fire detection mode after. Don't forget, although these are the economy ones, they do have this function. If you need accurate temperature measurement, you need to go for the T model, which is a lot more expensive. These are plus or minus eight degrees accuracy. So uh, when you need a higher degree of accuracy or higher temperature range uh, up to 550 degrees you need the T model okay so all of the standard functions first thing and it does support height connect if you really want to put this on height connect and the platform access is there and um, I've connected directly to the laptop for filming so we're not going to enable that under the video and audio you've got the two cameras you've got the 1080p camera and you've got the thermal camera so we have set those up to be what we want them to be under image You've got a couple of things in the image because it's the uh, uh, bispectrum and we can do image fusion technique on this. So we've got the dead pixel correction on thermal. Um, we don't need to do that as a brand new camera. We hopefully got no dead pixels to correct. Uh, you've got picture in picture. So in the camera one mode, we can have that as picture in picture or overlap mode, enable that and save. And that would give us the thermal within the day night camera. And we can actually move that around to suit wherever it suits the image and and save. Oop. So we do have picture and picture functionality. If that's uh, of use to you, we're going to change that, put it back to normal. And I'm going to show you the image fusion technique. Select the thermal camera. So there's the image and we got details overlay and we can actually change the way we do the fusion ratio and the border fusion ratio. So if we just change that. Not my cup of tea at all. I, if I find that quite strange, if I'm honest, but we are able to um, provide that uh, sort of image fusion technique, if you like. Um, again, the more you do it, the more obvious it becomes. Again, not really my cup of tea, but it's there if you want it. Or we can go the other way and go back down there, click save, and it will remove that. So it goes back to uh, thermal itself. So it's up to you which mode you have it in. Um, I prefer it as a thermal. VCA rule display. So on the thermal imaging camera, you choose what colors for normal pre alarm and alarm, and for the font size, uh, we're going to leave that as set. Under event, we've got standard alarm input output, and under smart event, we've got the. I've got to change the mode on it. So you've got dynamic fire source and fire source region so you've got those as the smart events we're not in the fire detection mode don't forget storage you can put an sd card in there we're not going to put an sd card in there you've got vca so this is the uh, intelligence stuff so first of all we're going to enable vca and click save we're going to put display trajectory which is the line that leaves behind you and we'll say 10 seconds and target marking color yes you can choose to have these on and off. It depends on how you want to uh, track your target, I guess. Display on alarm picture, yes and yes. Save that. Camera calibration. It's really important that you calibrate your camera. Uh, by default, it's not calibrated. So we go into calibration. Wait for that to load. Click on calibrate. It tells you how to do that there. Click on OK. Click start and I'm basically going to zigzag in front of it. So click start now. I'm going to walk across the field of view. Okay, and stop that. There we go. Calibration succeeded. So it's taken snapshot snapshots at me of various uh, 
point in the field of view, so we're going to save that. You can, of course, manually calibrate that, but we've done it as an auto weight. That's always the best method. I'm going to save that one. Then under shield region, you can put any areas you don't want the uh, analytic to be active in. For instance, if you wanted to mask off this area here, you just uh, draw that. Under rule, we're going to add a rule in. We're going to say uh, DVS. We're going to give it uh, an intrusion zone. We're going to do a duration for two seconds. Sensitivity 50, human or vehicle. You can select which one or all targets. And background interference off. Um, there's no background interference with blowing trees, sunlight, etc. So we should be okay on that one. We're going to draw the area. So we're going to say anyone in this area here. In fact, I'm going to increase that up to there. Click save. Okay, uh, under arm, alarm, arm in schedule is 24-7, and alarm linkage you select if you want to notify surveillance center, send email, trigger outputs, etc., or an SD card. So that's pretty much set up, so we'll go and check that works in a minute. Uh, under advanced configuration, this is where you can start adjusting it. I would start by default. If you've got anything uh, where it's not working correctly, contact us at DVS or Hike Vision and we can help run through this. But you can adjust like the background update, the minimum target size, a single alarm if you only want a single alarm to come through. Um, uh, change that to multiple, restore it. You've got distant view, general, or leave, leaves interfered with a view with blowing trees. We'll put that to general and click save. And then the global size filter, you can actually start setting up what size uh, you want to filter the object. But we don't really need to do that by default. That's something we can do um, after. You can also do temperature measurement at the same time. So we can say enable temperature measurement and color. Yeah, just enable all of them. Data refreshes every three seconds in degrees Celsius, but we can choose Kelvin or Fahrenheit. And then the options are minus 20 to 150. The T model goes up to 550. So we'll click save. Under advanced settings, wait for it to load. We can actually uh, go into expert mode. I find this actually easy to configure. We can enable an area and put like area one. We can do it as a point or an area. Distance, let's say 20 meters. Reflective temperature. We don't really need to alter the reflective temperature by default. Um, again, a lot of these are quite specific, so you can let DVS know or Hike Vision know if you need to adjust them. Alarm rule is enabled. Uh, alarm temperature, if we go over 35 degrees, filtering time is 3 seconds. Pre alarm temperature, anything over 25 degrees. Again, filtering time, 3 degrees. Tolerance temperature is three degrees, and you can trigger the alarm output, etc. Click save, click save, draw an area. So, this is separate to the VCA. Save. So, you've got two areas there. So, that's the temperature one, and that's the VCA one. So, you can see that. It's jumping to the hottest point, which is about 22 degrees. It is quite warm in this warehouse. There's a metal roof, even though it's raining. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It is still quite warm. And then, again, under linkage method, you've got your linkage um, options there. So, under live view, let's make this... Let's just start it like this. Let's see if you can see... Okay, so you've got both the VCA and the temperature box enabled at the same time. You can see it's jumping to the hottest point, which is over, it's the PC actually, um, PC screen over there. So I'm going to walk through now and see if it detects. So I should be able to um, get this. If I walk through here, I'm around uh, 12 meters away from the camera.
Okay, so uh, Internet Explorer is a little bit behind uh, me. That's just how Internet Explorer works. So if you can fix that Microsoft, then in fantastic. Um, you can see there that worked really well from what I could see. Um, you can see me in the day night camera on the thermal camera. The detection works really well. Um, hopefully you found this of interest. What I'm going to do now quickly is reboot the camera into temperature measurement mode, uh, fire detection mode rather than temperature measurement and VCA. And we'll have a quick look at that function. Uh, stay with us and we'll be with you in two ticks. Okay, so I've uh, enabled the fire detection mode. So under configuration, I've changed the working mode, which does reboot the camera. So I've disabled the temperature measurement just so it's a cleaner image. So it, I've disabled that. Under system maintenance, VCA resource type is now fire detection mode. So under event and smart event, you've got dynamic fire source detection. So using the thermal camera, we enable the dynamic fire source detection and we choose it as dynamic fire or smoking mode. So obviously you can choose which one works best for your scenario. Display fire source info on stream, yes. The sensitivity, start at 50, but you can work it up or back. Um, arm in schedule and linkage method. So again, what you want it to do when it's detected. So that's all you have to do. If you have a region you want to mask, so you know there's a hot source that you want to mask if I'm going into alarm. Again, under fire source region shield, you go into there. What you can see there, I put a heat gun on there, onto a pallet truck. If I put it onto a f this way split. So there is a... Um, a stack truck with a heat gun on there. You can see it's still warm, so I've just tested it. What I'm going to go is and turn that on and turn the nozzle around. What you'll see then is that will pick up the extreme heat source fire risk and then it will alarm on the image where that potential risk is. So if I just show you quickly. So that's now facing the camera, and as you can see there, if I enable that image, it's actually highlighted the nozzle of the gun and said area one, that's where the fire risk is, and that would actually cause the uh, linkage alarm to go. So you can see that'll just get hotter and hotter, and the green crosshair will stay on there, and the target, if I move it round, the target will move with it, and if I move this round, You can see that's gone into alarm there and it's moved, so I'm going to turn that off. So you can see how powerful that can be, um, especially when fitted internally, where it's a, a very stable environment. So a cost-effective thermal with bi-spectrum if you want it. Um, low cost uh, or low distance, should I say, VCA, but really, really highly effective because of the way that analytic is so stable in a thermal and fire detection if you really want it. Go get yourselves um, a bargain. It really is a, a great device and we expect to see a massive uptake on that. We're stocking it at DVS. If you need any more info, please contact us, your sales rep or technical or even myself. And once again, thank you very much. See you next week for another how-to video. Thanks and take care. Cheers, guys.